Hello and welcome to That's Football. Good to be back. Transfer news, done deals and all that jazz. What a January it's been, to be honest, so far. I mean, we've seen Coutinho go for massive money to uh, Barcelona from Liverpool and now we've got the Alexis Sanchez Mkhitaryan deal will it be cash or will it be Mkhitaryan part of it I've just seen somebody there a United fan no doubt saying it should have been Fellaini um, I don't know whether Arsenal are that stupid but we'll see but lots and lots going on and I do think it's going to really heat up in the next couple of weeks as well I think I think this is I said it a few weeks ago I think the January transfer window has always been a bit uh, a bit me I suppose really you know you get the odd good deal but I, I do think it's going to be become more like like it has been this year more exciting the mini transfer window in the middle of the season I know a lot of managers don't like it but for fans post Christmas blues and all that it, you know you've got your football but you've also got your transfer news and it is an opportunity to go and do things that maybe you ran out of time within the summer and I think running out of time in the summer is interesting because Sanchez was going to Man City on August 31st they ran out of time, they thought they'd get him in January and look how things change but we're starting off with Aubameyang to Arsenal and one thing I'd say about Arsenal Football Club is they are very, very, very clever because they, um, they, there was something out today I saw that they, they charge per person more than any other club in the country, possibly in the world, to go and watch games at the Emirates. But they're never going to win the league. They're, not, they're nowhere near winning the league at the moment. And I think while Wenger's in charge, that probably isn't going to happen. And then they go from one disaster to another, but Wenger stays in charge, the board stay in charge, and the fans keep going and being overcharged. How do they do it? Well, what they do is they will lose Sanchez and I still think they'll lose Ozil this, this January. But what they'll go and do at the same time is it won't be like there won't be any time for the fans to dwell on it. There'll be a massive negative, but a little positive as well. And I think the massive, massive negative is they are going to lose Alexis Sanchez to Manchester United, um, their best player by a long way. But what they'll do is they'll get Mkhitaryan and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we can turn him into a player. And they'll probably get Aubameyang as well. And if they get Aubameyang and Mkhitaryan, then the fans will go, well, we're really annoyed that we've lost Sanchez. But actually, if these two players play like they did at Dortmund, we've got the better deal. You haven't got the better deal. You've just, you know, your best player has basically snubbed you and walked away. Um, but Mkhitaryan and Aubameyang will sort of lessen that blow. What I would say about Mkhitaryan is I'm a Manchester United fan. Everyone knows that. I don't think he suits the Premier League. I'd be, I, I wish him all, all the best if he does go to Arsenal. I don't think he suits the Premier League. But if Arsenal get something out of him, then fair play. On Aubameyang, I cannot deny that he is a player that I would love to have had at Manchester United over the last few years when we needed a striker. He's quick. He runs the flanks well. He can finish. He's quite tall. He's quite strong. Um, he's a good striker. The only reservation is, is that I always, you know... Is Arsenal the right package for him? I mean, we saw it, I think it was last summer that he might go to China. And that obviously shows certain things about Aubameyang that, you know, a bit of a mercenary wants to go and earn money in China. But if Arsenal have put a package together that he's, you know, he quite fancies, then fair play to Arsenal because the money he could go and earn in China. Just just that, just ask Graziano Pelle, uh, Pella, sorry, who used to be at Southampton. I think he's one of the best players in the world playing in China. He, you know, wasn't even the best striker in Southampton. So, Abamian could go and earn a lot of money at Arsenal. If they pull that off, I think it's clever. And I think it's a very good deal for them. And what it, what does it mean for Lacazette, who is an out-and-out -out striker, and so is Abamian? They're never going to play both up front. So is it condemning Lacazette to be a flop already? Who knows? Because Abamian suits... You know, Abamian for me, from an Arsenal point of view, and I'm not an Arsenal fan, but you know, whenever I get asked about Arsenal, all I say is, look, Wenger in and keep him in. Because Arsenal used to be a massive rival to Manchester United. Probably our best rival because Chelsea was based on money, Man City's based on money, Arsenal and United was a good proper rivalry. Where did it go wrong? I think Wenger just never got a number nine. He had a good team around it, but he never went and got a proper number nine. And I think Aubameyang would be that, but unfortunately the team that around that also needs a lot of work. But if Arsenal get Aubameyang, I think that's a really good deal and it's looking highly likely. So keep your eye on that. Um, Andy Carroll. <laughs> Edwin Castro's laughing. Andy Carroll to Chelsea. Pfft. I tell you what, Andy Carroll doesn't need a medical. Antonio Conte needs a med medical. And I have nicked that off Twitter and I'm sure everybody's reading it, but it's true. Mourinho has got into his wig, sorry, into Conte's head so much that he's going to go and spend 30 million on Andy Carroll. I mean, I thought drink water was, was weird enough. Ross Barkley, I can see the potential there and I did, I thought United should have gone in for him for 15 million. But Andy Carroll, I mean... I had to laugh when Liverpool bought him, but at least they got rid of him. If Chelsea go and buy Andy Carroll, my God, that is just... 
Yeah, he's tall, but one, he's very injury prone, and two, he's crap. Let's be honest, he is not very good. He's certainly not a top four player. I mean, Chelsea's recruitment, I think Conte sort of dis- distances himself from it, to be fair, because he was asked about Ross Barkley and it was like, mm, I don't know whether there's going to be any more signings and everything. So maybe he's not involved in the recruitment, but Chelsea always were a good recruiting side. Their transfers were always very good. So I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm happy and I'm because I'm not a Chelsea fan. Um, I'm laughing. Um, funnily enough, my dad's a Chelsea fan. He can't believe it. You know, um, he, I, it's just... The, the mind boggles as to why you would want Andy Carroll at your club. I mean, obviously, he's going to be a bench player and he's a bench option. But, you know, very, very, very odd signing. And I don't think it's going to be a signing that's going to go any other way than badly for Chelsea. Um, that's some of what people have got to say on that. Um, Mickey is good enough, in my opinion. A lot of talk about that. Andy Carroll will be a flop, says Zeno. And I don't like Darren Gibbs, says Aduka. Okay. Um, Zeno says also that Aubameyang could play with Lacazette up front. I don't think they can. I think they, I think they are out and out forwards. Neither of them have really got a creativity element to their game. And you don't see two out and out strikers anymore. A lot of people said that Leicester did it when they won their title, but they didn't. The player behind Vardy, who could get up and support him, actually always dropped in the midfield. Lacazette and Aubameyang cannot drop in the midfield and they're not creative players. He'll have to play one or the other, or he'll have to play one on the on the flank. And um, obviously that won't suit that player. Um I wonder what uh, West Ham have got in the pipe work, though, actually. Because if they're going to get let Andy Carroll go, they want to let get rid of Hernandez, who I think would be worth the punt as a bench player for any side. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with trading cards and more. They may as well go and sign Peter Crouch. It is, uh, it is a very, very funny and odd deal for Chelsea to go through with. Let's flip back to Arsenal, though, very, very quickly. Theo Walcott going to Everton. Great young player with lots of talent. He's, he's, he's the Manchester United Jesse Lingard. He's not that young. I don't know how old Walcott is now. He must be 27 or late 20s or something like that because he went to the... Did he go to the 2002 World Cup as a 17-year-old? No, that can't can't have been... No, it wasn't 02. He must... He, I think it was the 2006 he went as a 17-year-old. So he must be about 28 now. Um, Walcott's weird. I always used to put Walcott in my fantasy Premier League team. I remember one particular week I put him in, in as my captain and, and everyone at work was like, what are you doing? And he went and scored a hat trick. Um, he's a weird player, Walcott. I, I, you know, apart from the fact he plays for Arsenal, I actually think he's a decent player who, for some reason, has never, ever, ever been able to get any consistency or fulfil his talent. But I remember Walcott. You know, he's he's good at finishing. He is quick, but for some reason, I don't watch him enough. I'm not an Arsenal fan, so I don't watch him enough to know why he doesn't have any consistency. Because when I, whenever, whenever you see the goals on match of the day, or you see him playing in a game where he plays well. He's got that pace. He's got the finishing ability. Um, maybe it's a physical thing. Maybe it's a physical thing because I know he's not particularly big. But um, Everton, £20 million. Um, Everton need a bit of pace in their attack, definitely. Uh, obviously, Allardyce at Everton has steadied the ship. But, you know, they missed Lukaku. It doesn't matter who they brought in. And I think some of the players they brought in have flopped, like Klassen. Um, happens a lot with Dutch midfielders. Um, but... Walcott will give Everton something that they don't have, a bit of pace. So um, it's a good move. He's obviously not going to get in the Arsenal team. Um, Mass changes at Arsenal. They are definitely going to bring players in. Um, Malcolm from Bordeaux doesn't look like it's happening anymore. And it's gone very quiet in relation to Lucas Moura as well, who is sort of very, very flirtive in relation to a Premier League deal. But at the moment, as we stand with things, um, very quickly, I will touch on Alexis Sanchez and and Mkhitaryan because... Manchester United fan, we've done this to death on the United Standard. We're just waiting for that deal to go through. It is going to go through. Um, we were told on Sunday lunchtime uh, by a very good source that uh, Alexis Sanchez had uh, done the deal with Manchester United. And what's been going on the last few days is whether it's going to be money or whether it's going to be Mkhitaryan. There's some statement from Mini Rioli yesterday that this is the Mkhitaryan deal, not the Sanchez deal. And if Mkhitaryan doesn't go to Arsenal, the Sanchez deal falls through. That's not the case. That's not the case at all. Manchester United will just pay £35 million straight if uh, if Mkhitaryan pulls out. But Arsenal wants a player. And, you know, quite rightly, £35 million doesn't really help Arsenal a hell of a lot because it's not a lot of money in the, in the modern day market. So if they get a player for Sanchez, it helps them. And uh, obviously, 
they've got a big game against Palace at the weekend. So um, Arsenal are holding out to get a player for it and they're trying to persuade Mkhitaryan to go there. From a United point of view, I think they'd like to get rid of Mkhitaryan, but they can pay the money as well. It's not a problem. Um, that deal should be done by Friday lunchtime because that's when both players would need to be registered to play in the games at the weekend. I still think it could happen today, certainly tomorrow. Um, keep your eye on that. In relation to Arsenal, I also expect Arsenal to do business this week. I think Aubameyang or Malcolm, although I said Malcolm probably won't happen, I think Arsenal will look to do that deal, as I said at the start of the video, very, very quickly. They will not want meltdowns and uh, anger and everything like that at a home game on Saturday. There will be frustration, but they will quickly be moving to try and ease that frustration. And I would say that Sanchez and Manchester United are probably quite frustrated saying, look, we had this deal done on Sunday, we want to announce it. And Arsenal will be saying, look, we need a little bit of time here because if we, we let you announce that and we've got nothing in place, there's going to be a lot of problems. And I think Arsenal just want to have something positive in place to sort of kid their fans in a way and say, look, we've got Aubameyang. Yeah, Sanchez is gone, but look, we've got Aubameyang and, and, and Mkhitaryan. And you can't blame Arsenal for trying to do that. And I think that's what's going to happen. So... It's frustrating for United fans. It's frustrating because we know the deal's going to be done. We just want it to be done. And um, But yeah, I, I, I think Arsenal will be doing some deals this week. Um, let's have a look what people are saying in the live comments. Um, still say we should have tried to go to Aubameyang last year. He's top 10 striker in the world. Martial and Rashford would learn so much. That's Dorian Joseph, who's a United fan. Look, if, um, if, if Arsenal get Aubameyang, again, it's a bit like if Sanchez had gone to Manchester City or, or maybe Chelsea... Um, in fact, we did the video on here a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? I, I said when it looked like Sanchez were going to Man City, I said, what a statement that is. You know, they're, they're, they're comfortably top of the league. They're going to win the title and they're going to go and add one of the best players in the Premier League. I mean, yes, you can have your club loyalty, but this is the point of this channel, really. It's, you know, we want we want the banter, we want the chat, but we want it to be more collective from fans from all clubs. And Alexis Sanchez is a great player wherever he goes. Fortunately, he's coming to Manchester United. Aubameyang is a player that I've mentioned on the United stand for the last two, three years and said I would love him at Manchester United. Not anymore. We've got Lukaku and I wouldn't swap Lukaku for Aubameyang. I know some people would, but I wouldn't. So it'd be, it'd be a waste of time at United. But if he does go to Arsenal, which looks likely, I'm not going to suddenly say he's rubbish. Obviously, the jury's out on whether he can adapt to the Premier League because the Premier League has been the graveyard of players that you'd think will be fantastic. Mkhitaryan, uh, Kagawa... Uh, Sam, uh, Sebastian Veron from years ago there's loads and loads of players who've just not been able to do it in the Premier League but I do think Aubameyang will suit the Premier League there is a lot of chances in the Premier League it's quick and he's quick um, I think he'll bring a different dimension to Arsenal and a little bit more direct but he's an out and out goal scorer and I think Arsenal haven't had that for years and we might see Probably a little bit too late for Arsenal because for many years they've had the team behind that number nine, but they've not had the number nine. They may potentially get the number nine now, but they don't really have the players behind. Ozil's going to go. Sanchez has gone. You know, Ramsey and Wiltshire. It's not the same as some of the players they've had over the years, even like, you know, the likes of Kazoya, uh, Kazola, Rosecki. You know, many, many good creative players that Arsenal have had. So, um, but you'll give him something and he is a good player. And um, don't worry, Griezmann will never sign for Man City. He is a player who plays for historical clubs, says Blitchard Crushing. Well, there's, there's, you know, that's more of a summer thing. Uh, summer thing. Um, thanks for the contribution, Mikey, mate. Uh, where would you play Sanchez? Love the channel, Mark. Um, thanks for the contribution, Mikey. I cannot tell you where I would play Alexi Sanchez because it's my one little bit I've kept back for the United stand. And I keep getting asked in this all the time. And my answer is, I'm going to do a video on where Sanchez will play for Manchester United, but I'm going to do it when he's signed. It's my little, sort of little cherry on the cake when he has signed. I've kept that back purposely. But I do know, um, I don't know where San Mourinho would play him, but I know where I would play him. And it's not necessarily where a lot of people would play him. So I'm looking forward to doing that video. So keep an eye out for that when he's signed. Um, Liverpool should sign a player, says Umar Ahmed. Um, thank you. I mean, it's good to get a Liverpool fan on. I mean, uh, Van Dijk's been a good signing. But Coutinho has gone. Um, they've inquired about Goretzka, apparently. And I think Goretzka's a fantastic player. Um, really, really good. And he's free in the summer. But Goretzka looks like he's agreed a deal with Bayern Munich. Although, technically, I don't think he can publicly do that because it's in the same country. It's like this country, you know. His contract's up in the summer, but you can't do a deal with someone in your country. But you can talk to clubs outside. Um, 
from a United perspective, I hope he goes to Bayern Munich because he's a great player. Well, he's not a great player yet, but he's a very good player. I'd like him at United. So if Liverpool get him, he's a good signing. Riyad Mahrez is interesting. I think he wants out of uh, of Liverpool. Uh, sorry, Leicester. I'm sure he'd go to Liverpool, but Liverpool, I think, briefed the press to say that they weren't in for him. And I think he would be £45 million. Lamar from Monaco is a player that Liverpool have been linked with. It's gone a bit quiet around Liverpool, but I think Liverpool do need to add somebody. Coutinho goes. They've still got Firmino, Salah, Mane, uh, a really good front three. Um, and Lallana's obviously coming back, but they need something else. You know, if Salah does his hamstring or Mane... Or Firmino, that you know, that they're scraping the barrel a bit, and I think they will be looking to bring somebody in. Who? It's interesting. I think Liverpool, as I said, I think this January transfer window has been great. It's been really exciting, and there's a lot going on. Um, and I, and I think it, hopefully, I'm I, I like I don't know about you lot. I like the transfer. I love the transfer window in the summer, um, and I like the fact that the January transfer window is now becoming a bit more interesting. As I said, I know the clubs and the fan, and the managers don't like it, but. Who cares? You know, this is something for the fans. And, it, you know, transfer business always does get you excited, especially when it's signings that are going to improve your club. And, you know, Arsenal hands are tied in relation to Sanchez and Ozil. That's their fault. How they've let them get to within six months of the end of the contract is for their fans to question their club about it. But Aubameyang in January is a massive signing because Aubameyang's a, you know, world-known striker. Sanchez United, it's a massive signing. Coutinho to Barcelona, it's a massive signing. Van Dijk to Liverpool, you know, they need a centre-back. A lot of money spent on him. Um, so a lot of clubs are doing a lot of bit. Andy Carroll to Chelsea, <laughs> a banter signing. But there's a lot of signings going on and I think there will be more. We we're only on, we've still got two weeks today the transfer window closes. So lots and lots going on. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new, bottom right hand corner, That's Football is the generic channel where you can come on and, and discuss things and uh, we will be doing call-ins and all that over the next few months as we build towards next season in the World Cup. We started the channel back in September and there is watch-alongs and stuff, it's just not consistent yet but we are trying to do more and more and we will do through the year, it's just a bit of a toe in the water sort of channel really but it's not going anywhere and we will increase over the coming weeks and months. So subscribe, bottom right hand corner, tell everyone about it. Everybody is welcome and that's the point of it. We wanna get uh, we wanna get that sort of banter and chat going and debate. So uh, we've covered a lot. Chrysia Prince says, says, I think the deal is late because of Arsenal and Riola involved. He's talking about that Mkhitaryan and uh, um, Sanchez one. It'll go through, don't worry about it. It's definitely gonna go through. Uh, smash the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, we will be back. I think we're gonna do one tomorrow. I think we'll probably do one tomorrow around half past one as well. So uh, I've got a bit of spare time at the moment. So I think tomorrow at uh, about half past one, we'll do another transfer show for you. And um, I think I think it's gonna be very interesting, very interesting. Um, the next watch along, I've not looked at the weekend fixtures, but I'm sure Sandra will fancy doing one. Um, I might get a little time to do one. I am going to try and do more watch-alongs this year because I really enjoyed the Champions League ones with uh, the, the Spurs and the Dortmund and the Madrid games. And Champions League will be back soon, so we'll definitely be doing some, some stuff. In fact, I've highlighted a few already, some cracking games, isn't there? So Barcelona, Chelsea, and uh, is it Real Madrid, PSG? Some good ones. So lots planned on the channel. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for all the nice comments. And... Uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Mad Marcus Mondays, Dr. Chunky Biscuit, he's got to get match fit. But yes, it's definitely on. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching.